Hello and welcome to lesson number 6.1. It's all about creating data. Uh, in the past, we were consuming data that was already there. All right? We've chosen to download some OSM data. We have added data from the exercise data. But this time, we will digitize and create our own data sets. In this time, we will have a look at polygon features as well as polyline features. But if you would like to digitize something, you need to have something in mind. So digitize areas, you would like to visualize some content that you might want to show on a map. And then this time we will digitize from a satellite image. Therefore, we will need the satellite image first in our, web, in our project here. So let's use the data source manager, go to raster, and check the raster folder in the exercise data. There we are. And we will use the 3420C2010 uh, RGB image. Open this, add this to the uh, to the view. And um, it's now above everything else, right? So let's place it right above the um, OSM base map. So now we have it here, and there are some features we would like to digitize, especially here in this corner. There is a rugby field over there, an athletic field, and a school campus. And we would like to digitize these three areas. Therefore, we will create a polygon data and, or polygon shapefile, and we will do so by selecting, well, let's have a look. New shapefile layer, that's our tool of choice. First, we need a file name. This will be uh, placed here in own data. I've created this folder. Uh, let's say, well, school properties, right? School property. And it is .shp. It is file encoding. We will use standard UTF-8 geometry type. It's not point, it's not multipoint, it's not line, it's a polygon. And we will use the current CRS, the coordinate reference system of WGS84 with latitudes and longitudes. As we are using .shapefile, this is some sort of um, yeah, structure in the end. So once you go with shapefiles, you are limited to the properties of a shapefile. So that means that your attribute names can only have a limited set of characters. And um, you are not allowed to store like time data in there. So there's no there's no field of time type date time data. That's some sort of yeah, inconvenience of a shapefile, but for the moment it will work quite well. So, and we will create a new field. So normally if you create a new shapefile or you're planning to create a new shapefile, the ID is always there. That's the only attribute that is shipped with a shapefile by default, but we will add an, um, a field name. And this, these are the types we can use with a shapefile. So it's only text data, whole number, decimal number, and date. Oh, oh there's a date support in shapefile. Have known this one, but we will go with the text data. And the length of 80 characters is just fine for the moment. We need to add this to the fields list. So it's listed there. And we we'll just say, OK, there we are. So now we have an empty school property layer. Let's have a look in the properties. So it's school property, Ezra shapefile, UDF8, Polygon, EPSG, everything we decided in the first place. And now we will go to the editing tool. First of all, we need to switch on editing. This is the toggle editing button. You can also right click on it and say toggle editing. And then there's a bunch of tools adjusted. So these are some ad advanced tools, but the basic tools are here. So we have current edits. We would like to cancel for selected layers or cancel for all layers. We can switch on and off the editing function. We can add a polygon feature. We can play around with the vertices of the polygon and we can you know, some of paste features but at the moment I don't think I have anything in the um, I have anything to paste so first of all we will add a new polygon right and we will add this here to the rugby field so this is the rugby field and let's go by clicking here 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 and here 
you can see that it's still trying to help you in digitizing process, but the right click will finish the last edit. So I've made a right click somewhere and it was just using the current vertices. ID is one. Well, let's start with zero because we are so fancy. And name is rugby field, right? Rugby field. Okay. Second edit. Let's go here. Let's go by. There's this snapping already adjusted. That means that it will snap to the next vertex it, it can find in the current um, map canvas. But this is fine for a moment. So let's go with this edge. Go there. 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 Where? Where is the end of the rugby field? I don't have any idea. So we will go just like this. And once again, right click to make this finish. ID is one. Name is, oh no, it's not a rugby field. This is an athletics field. And then there's a third item we have. It's a school campus, right? So once again, click on this. Let's digitize the school campus. Let's say it looks like this. You, uh, you have seen this greenish one? This is just an implicator that it, uh, or it is stating, well, have a look at your, uh, your polygon, you are self-intersecting, and self-intersecting polygons are not good at all. Name, this is the school campus. So now we have three polygons and let's have a look in the in the school property uh, attribute table. First of all, you can see the little icon here that just tells you that there is some uh, editing available uh, and we should definitely save all layer edits for the moment. So let's have a look at the attribute table. Zero, two, one. Well, great. School campus athletic fields we can sort. Just works fine, right? save again no need for saving because we haven't made any edits but just to make sure let's have a look once again into the attribute table because there's something we can do right in the attribute table so if there's something hidden here or you would like to change the name or the id you can do that once the editing mode is switched on on you can do this and then there's another very cool feature because sometimes you're messing around with the with the vertices, right? So there's some, yeah. Maybe you have placed an an vertex on the wrong side, right? So what we can do, we can use a vertex tool to change the vertices, right? I just clicked on one vertex, vertex, and placed it to the new position. This is possible. Once you're right clicking into one feature, you can see here the vertex editor and you can see that there are the X and Y coordinates of each structure listed here. So you can directly edit it there as well. That's it for the moment. So let's save the edits, toggle editing off and there you go. You have your very first self-created data set which is called school properties and it's of type polygon then there's another feature called yeah we will digitize now another feature which is streets so there's this roads layer here we will create our own roads layer right away so let's click on well maybe let's work with a new temporary scratch layer so we'll skip the creation of a new uh, shape file we will just work with a scratch layer Scratch layers are meant to be in place at the time being. So once you're closing QGIS or the system is crashing, scratch layer is gone. So be careful with this. But we will go with this right away. So roads and we have a geometry type of type line string. Same applies here. We'll use the same. Now there's some sort of line from here I think we should digitize it to this end and then there is another line going from here to here we will just connect those lines therefore once again I've switched on 
editing mode the other way with roads go here and say new line feature then we will zoom in and don't be careful with the with the vertices so just click here where you need to have a new line right and be precise as possible or be as precise as possible you can use the uh, key arrows to navigate the map content so if you are somehow stuck somewhere you just can reuse uh, these keys to pan the map and you can zoom uh, zoom in and zoom out using the uh, scroll button on your mouse I think minus and plus no minus and plus is not working so now I'm nearly finished so this is somehow a path and this snapping is really important if you would like to create a good model in the end so now this is done and once I've seen it well I have not had any dialogue right I was not asked would you like to store name or type whatsoever no i just have this um line now and i will just increase the size of the symbology a little bit to make it better to see there's a line right so it goes from a to b great then there's a second line we need to digitize which goes here so once again you will first save this create a new line going from here uh, all the way through the hills once again it is always there's some discussion so use as many vertices as you need but don't click on every pixel right so if there's a straight line and if the road or this path takes a straight line don't uh, over digitize the line by adding more vertices because this is not a, not a good thing to have right so we are nearly at the end and there's the last vertex right okay great oh, I've digitized this one saved again and let's have a look at the attributes there is none so we will create a new attribute using this function new field great which is id id should be a whole number right length could be 10 just to make sure that we have enough space to save an id id is here zero and one great and we will add a new field called type type is so there's a lot of possible field types here because this is a scratch layer it is not bound to some sort of um, file type or something so but we will stick to the most easiest thing to keep in mind the text unlimited length don't uh, make it too length um, don't make it the entry too long but as it is a type there should be only the first one was the path the second one was a track that's it save it read to or toggle the editing now we have still our scratch layer let's use the um identify feature tool to have a look yeah that's a track id is one and that's a path id is zero great now we still have this as a memory layer right contents will be discarded after closing this project this is not so good so uh, just click on it and now you, you are asked to save the scratch layer now you have to choose uh, between different file formats and we will use this one and so we will still go with the shape file say roads layer name is you cannot even em uh, put some name in there because the shape file format does not support layer names recess no we will stick to the normal attributes here and we are done so right click on the properties again you will now see that this is not of type memory anymore it is of type shape file. 
And you can see that the unlimited length of the text file for Scratchly has now changed. So have a look here. We have ID integer 64 with numbers of or with a length of 10 as we have designed it, but the length of the string is not unlimited. So shapefile is uh, limited to 254 uh, characters in for string inputs, so string fields. So that's a burden for some of you. But this is it. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or remarks or anything else you need to raise, just drop a comment and I will answer it right away. Thanks again. Take care and goodbye.